Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. How y'all boys doing, man? Let's jump right into it, alright? So listen, I'm on my new build, that 84 badge build that I posted about a day ago. If you haven't seen that video, definitely go check it out. This build is incredible, and I'm actually really liking it. I almost think I like it more than my original LeBron James build. Now, I'm gonna have both builds, of course. You know, I always play on multiple builds, otherwise I get bored on the game. But as you can see, this build is called an offensive threat. But what I want to ask you guys is... What player, past or present, could I compare this player to? I got him dressed up like young Kobe, as you see, you know, Afro Kobe, Froby, whatever you want to call him. Shout out to the late, great Kobe Bryant, man. We got him looking like young Kobe in this video. But let me know what player you guys think this, you know, 84 badge build could become. Because, you know, I like to base my players around NBA players. So y'all let me know. But check this build out. He's six foot seven, so he is an inch taller than Kobe. You know, Kobe was 6'6". Six, six. But still, I feel like 6'7", six, 6'6", six, six is it, it, it's close enough now as you can see crazy driving deadly mid-range good three-pointer good playmaking and i mean the badge spread is incredible i think kobe's a pretty good fit you know with all those shooting badges we could put on difficult shots and and deep fades and all that type of stuff so i feel like kobe is a pretty good comparison now, the one thing, obviously, as you see, this build is not maxed out. It's only a 92 overall, and I don't have, you know, I'm missing a lot of badges. I'm missing eight defense badges. I'm missing 14 shooting badges. I'm missing a lot of badges. But finally, y'all, finally, the park is not skipping. The frame drop, the lag, whatever you want to call it, it was fine last night. So I was like, yo, I have to get some gameplay to show y'all what this build is capable of. Because I've been playing in the wreck with it a little bit, um, you know, grinding a little bit of offline, trying to get my badges and whatnot. But I could never post gameplay because it was the, the park was constantly choppy. But last night, it was fine. Hopefully, it stays that way. So, I got some gameplay on the twos for y'all. Please, if you could, just drop me a like, man. Helps me out a ton. Really appreciate everyone that drops a like on a video. And let's get into this gameplay, man. So, as you can see, I'm running the ball. You know, I'm, I'm handling the ball. My boy Laker fan's over in the corner spotting up for me. Shout out to my boy Laker fan. And we are just out here ISOing. Now, I think this year, ISO is going to be the meta because it is ridiculous what everyone's player is capable of man it is such exciting like it's such exciting gameplay for those of you that haven't played this game basically everybody's contact dunking everybody people are making 50 60 percent contested almost 100 percent contested i'm shooting spin jumpers in the mid range like everyone's build is a straight up demigod but here's where the separation becomes it's like your player could do everything, my player could do everything, but who can actually control their player better is where it comes down to. Now, not everyone's build is exactly the same, obviously. I mean, look at what we're doing out here, man. We're between the legs, spin back, drive in, contact dunk. Woo! Build is looking glitchy. That is for damn sure. Pulling up in his face, knocking it down, doing what we do. But it's like everyone's build is really good. Now, not everyone's build is the same, but everyone's build is really, really good. So the separation is like who can actually be better with their player? Who can actually do stuff? It's not like, oh, your build is a good shooter. My build is not a good shooter. So you're always going to shoot better than me. Like, nah, we could both shoot, but it's just who can shoot better. My build is unstoppable unless my controller dies. <laughs> And we're back. Here we go. We're going to snatch it back, step it back to half court, pull it from deep, 
and green it without a problem. That is with the Limitless Range Takeover. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. That Limitless Range Takeover, in my opinion, is complete trash. I feel like it does absolutely nothing for my player, despite the fact that I just green from half court. I honestly feel like I could do that without the Takeover. Like, the Takeover for me... Once I'm allowed to change it, when I get the Mama Mentality badge, I'm changing that takeover. I don't like it at all. But that's my first game on the twos this year. That is my first gameplay on the twos, and it was smooth. No chop, no lag, no frame drop. I'm happy with that. So let's keep it going. I got more gameplays here for you. If you haven't already, please drop me a like. So game number two. What I want to talk about here is the fact that my player has a 25 interior defense. For everyone making their player... I think I'm actually make a whole video on it, but I just want to talk about it for a second because that was one of my main concerns and some concerns I saw in the comments about this build is you got 25 interior defense. Is that going to hold up? Now I'm going to tell you right now, having a high interior defense has its benefits. Absolutely. But in terms of this build, I think it was better. I went with 25 because it allowed me to get badges and attributes in all other cat, you know, all these other categories and it, it just made my build a lot better offensively, in my opinion. But defensively, inside, I upgraded my block so much that I still get Hall of Fame Intimidator and Hall of Fame Rim Protector. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I get Gold Intimidator and Hall of Fame Rim Protector, okay? So, Gold Intimidator, Hall of Fame Rim Protector with a 90-something block rating. Here's the key. If you have no interior defense, you have to jump. You have to hit the block button. If you stand there and play hands up, your contest is going to be trash. But if you jump for the block, your block rating starts to come into play and you end up getting really, really good contests. Now, there's going to be instances, like I said, where it's nice to have that high interior. But if for some reason you made your build without interior defense, like I did because I wanted to have badges and attributes in other categories, then make sure you're pressing block. But check this out. Run at him. Hit the behind the back. It's just good ghosting him with the behind the back man that pro three behind the back is crazy this year i've been killing people with that all you know all uh week all week that i've been playing the game but that's the final thing i'm going to say until i make my video about interior defense if you have low interior you gotta jump so it's important to have badges like rim protector intimidator and pogo stick pogo stick is going to allow you to, you know to jump uh quicker so you could keep you know keep jumping to contest and uh listen it's it's it definitely has its challenges, but it's more than doable. It also depends on the game mode that you're playing. If you're playing 5v5 Pro-Am and comp scenarios, you're going to want interior defense if you're the center, of course. But in 2v2 Park, like an ankle breaker, step it back. But in 2v2 Park, like you're going to be fine with a low interior defense, especially if you're playing the guard position. Like, you know, I'm the ball handler. I'm, I'm, I'm playing the big, but I'm playing as the guard. And also, you got to realize, I'm 6'7 with a 7'4 wingspan. Like, I snag rebounds, I block shots, I, I do a lot of things well for somebody with no interior defense and no strength. Like, that, it's really just you gotta be able to find a way to work around your, your build's weaknesses. Because your build's such a well-rounded build, you don't have a lot of weaknesses this year. But if you made it like this, I made it so I'm like on steroids in every other category, and then I have a few categories that I'm really weak in. I just gotta find a way to play around it. And honestly, with this build so far, I haven't had any problems, like, any problems at all i really just absolutely enjoyed this build to the fullest and uh, i can't wait to get it maxed out because at 99 overall when i get the plus fours and then max badges change the takeovers to what i actually want whew, it's gonna be it's gonna be scary it is really really gonna be scary what this build is capable of i can only imagine when i hit legend i get 40 more badges that's 124 badges that's almost oh it's almost too many badges i don't even know what i'm gonna put it on but anyways gameplay number three here and you just see this this gameplay just shows just how hard it is to guard not only this build but just iso and double iso in general like if you have two players that know what they're doing know when to pass they both have uh the ability to throw quick passes because i'm telling you guys right now if you haven't played next gen if you have low pass accuracy your dude passes the ball really really slow so like if you drive and kick the defenders have time to recover and it's like it's useless they can basically collapse paint oh my god they can collapse paint and still recover to the shooters but if you have two people that can throw bullet passes whether it's because you have high pass accuracy or because you have bullet passer the badge on uh you know it, it's just it's very valuable being able to throw quick passes this year because iso in general is so hard you just see anytime you get on someone's hip contact dunk contact dunk contact dunk it's it's spectacular, but it's really, really hard 
to guard this year when people are like rim I, like iso rim runners which basically that's what i've been the last two years i mean yeah i do shoot the three but like if i have the chance i'm getting to the basket all day long but even if that like it's like if they hedge off now my shooting is so good that it's just greens all day any type of space for any build everyone could shoot for the most part like no one's making builds that can't shoot it's just really really tough to guard contact dunk after contact dunk after contact dunk all day long especially if you made your build how i made it with the longest wingspan and uh you know hall of fame posterizer and all that stuff look at corner pull up greens again it's like if they collapse down it's green if they don't collapse down it's a contact dunk you better make a build that not only has defense but you have to understand angles like it's not easy to get stops this year against like good players using uh like you know good rim running builds it's it's not easy at all it's just look at i ha what do i have right now i have two threes and five contact dunks like <laughs> or four contact dunks that that's that's tough that that's very tough look at he's got to come back i used the little kobe walk back behind the back drive in another contact dunk on this dude man another one that's 18 points and it's all green threes and contact dunks but we're gonna wrap this thing up as i said in the beginning of the video man make sure y'all let me know what player this represents i don't think kobe's a bad comparison honestly yeah it's an inch taller than kobe but i mean with the lethal mid-range game the good three-point shooting the crazy slashing the good playmaking and elite perimeter defense like I, I mean i think kobe's a good comparison wrap this thing up with yet another contact dunk man if you haven't already drop a like on the video anyone that stuck around to the end i truly appreciate you for watching the whole video man i love y'all boys can't wait to get this build to 99 to really show you what it's capable of but as you can see this thing is breaking the game